Hey Bulls fans, Adam Harry here with another Bulls Battle Report. Today I am playing Ben again. What's up Ben? How's it going? We are playing some Infinity, Infinity Today, which is a 28mm futuristic sci-fi skirmish game set in a cool sci-fi universe. Check them out, Chorus Belly. I'm sure you guys have seen the painting stuff, the articles, models, all that fun stuff on Bulls. So anyway, we are playing a quick uh, one of the scenarios from the new Operation Ice Storm starter. We are playing on a slightly larger table. Um, as you can see, we're playing on a 4x4, and we're actually playing, what is it, 200 points roughly? Well, we're just the starter with, boxes. We're, we're playing with the seven minis from the starter box, and that's why we're playing scenario five, is because that's the right. one where you use all seven of them. Yep. Um, so it just seemed, you know, we, we talked about it a lot, what we do for our armies. We don't want to make it too complicated, especially because we're kind of still noobs too. That's right. So what we ended up doing was just, you know what, screw it. We, we have the starter sets. We're just going to use them all from the starter sets. All of them. Yep. And they don't, they have just enough special rules that we're definitely going to learn some stuff. We're going to talk about what the models do. But nothing's going to be overly complicated. So we got some guys with uh, thermal optic camel flash. Boom! That's what this marker is. So that's that's a special rule you're going to need to know. We got some guys with a uh, combat jump like this yep. dude. There's he's not on the table for a reason. He's going to jump in somewhere. Hopefully, hopefully uh, last, last on time the back. He, last time he failed at that. He had, yep. just had one job and he didn't do it. But the objective on this mission <clears throat> is basically to control this uh, super secret agent here in the middle. Yeah, she's gonna by the to, end of the game. She's going to try to shoot at us as we make our way to the center. Yep. Uh, the game ends when we're all out of models, so we're going to have to play aggressively. Uh, and you get four points if you're the one who controls the roof at the end of the game, and that means have a model there that isn't dead or unconscious. Yep. And I am using uh, the Nomads from the starter set, and Ben is using the Pano forces from the starter. Right. So, um, With you that said, give me some respect. let's go over Ben's stuff real quick, and then I'll go over my stuff. All right, Ben, tell me what the Pano forces are rocking here. All right, so from left to right, we have our, uh, our Akalis. Uh, he's going to hopefully jump in. He's just got a combi rifle, but uh, I'm hoping I can put him over there behind uh, your your little line troops. Maybe he can cause some chaos. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is an orc troop. He's right. my lieutenant. Now, normally, you're not supposed to let your opponent know who the lieutenant is. What? But, but yeah, never let your opponent know who the lieutenant is. But this is just a... A demo, and so we're using the models straight as they are out of uh, out of the ice storm set, and Boom. that one says that the York trooper is your lieutenant. Yep. So as we get better with this, we'll probably have some some more in depth battle reports. But for now, there you nice. go. Over here, I got my father knight. Um, he is mostly what he has that's awesome. As you can see, he's got that big sword. So he he really wants to carve some dudes up in hand to hand combat. Uh, this is gonna be the, only the fourth game I've played with him, and. My focus, all three of the other games, has been just trying to get him to just hack or stab or chop somebody with that freaking sword he has. Using the engage AR open, not yes, the dodge. Correct. That's another thing we learned <laughs> last time. Yep. So hopefully this time we'll get to chop somebody up. Uh, this is a Nis. He's a sniper. Um, I did some really cool stuff with him the last time I played. He's got a really long range, uh, and I was able to deploy him on a piece of terrain, so he's got a very good vantage point. Uh, so he's going to do AROs at his automatic reaction order. Whenever Adam moves a model uh, or shoots with a model, any model that can see it gets to do an ARO automatic reaction order, and that includes shooting back at them. So yes. he can just shoot all over the board with those AROs, so that's pretty great for him. Unless I shoot him back first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the last up, we've got the Fusiliers. Um, every faction has what it's called their cheerleaders. Sometimes you can get multiple cheerleader options. Cheerleaders uh, aren't necessarily like... They're, they're not they, awesome, they but they're not stuff. terrible. Yeah, these guys can do stuff. They have a, you know, they have the combi rifle. It's a really basic gun, mm -hmm. but it's not terrible. It's got a burst value of three. That means you roll three dice with it, get three shots. Um, but they die pretty easily, and because of the weird way that Infinity uh, generates orders, you want all your troops alive, and that's why they, that's why they get called cheerleaders because uh, every every model you has gives you an order token. And which you are can, which are these, we use these. Um, they come with a set. Um, so yeah, every model that you that you take to the battlefield gives you an order token, plus one for your lieutenant. And uh, you can use those on any model. So just having these guys on the board will let me activate some of my better guys, like this guy or this guy, three extra times. So yep. it's also important just going to, to protect them, yes. but if I can get to him and kill him, then I'm gonna shrink his order pool and he'll be able to do less during the game. So. Exactly. So That's just by killing these guys, he's, he, he can you know limit this guy's effectiveness by about half because he's going to lose almost half of his orders. Yep. Yep. So with that said, let's go check out the nomads. 
All right, it's your turn, Adam. Let's talk about your nomads. Sweet, nomads. So first up is I have this guy right here. He's actually a Spectre. He uh, is using the TO camo. When you deploy something with uh, with camo, or in this case, TO camo, you actually deploy the, the token and you don't tell your opponent what the guy is. So Ben, forget that that's a hidden Spectre guy there. But what? Exactly. But uh, he's rocking a Kami rifle, um, basic stuff, infiltration, and two personal ones. So multi, I, I can employ, uh, deploy him further, but I'm choosing not to. So that's one thing there. All right. Uh, next up, as we'll start here, this is the uh, Grenzers, or part of the Grenzers. It's a uh, just a sniper, basically. He's got a multi-sniper rifle. Uh, he's got courage, which is nice. If if he has to take a guts test, uh, he can choose what happens. So basically, choose the pass or fail. So a guts roll is basically uh, if you get shot by something, you might have to go diving for cover, uh, like a frightened child, because uh, that's... which is what I would do. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, um, shoot at me. I'm but this guy, him. he is a hard ass, and if he gets shot, he's just like whatever. Or he I'm can be like, it, nope. with the job. I heard that that was a fifty cal round. I'm ducking. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. Uh, he also has a multi special visor uh, level one, which basically helps nullify some camo stuff. But so does uh, that mean you'll be ignoring my Nissa's CH mimetism? If I could see you, but there's a box in the way, uh, which is kind of why we did that. Yep. All right. Who's next? <laughs> uh, we have a Reverend <clears throat> with, uh, healer there. So. Uh, She's the medic. Uh, she's got mimetism, which is a uh, chameleon thing. So uh, camo, basically, and then doctor. So she can actually help res guys. If you uh, go down, if you get knocked down, you take a wound, if you have one wound, and you get hit and you fail your armor, you you are unconscious and uh, knocked down, you're prone, and she can run over and uh, pop you back up. So, But if she fails that test, then you're really dead. You go from unconscious to dead Whoa. dead. Yeah, there we go. So, Unconscious. Oh, that, that's just glare right now, but yeah. whatever. We'll yeah. see him again later. Or just on Ben's guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Uh, I also have, so that's the Reverend, Reverend Mother there, Benny Jesuit Witch. That's what she is. <laughs> um, and then uh, next up, we have the Immobile Brigada, which this is my, don't tell Ben, that's my lieutenant. Uh, multi rifle and light flamethrower, also has courage. Uh, he's kind of a boss, kind of a hoss. So uh, I'll be using him quite a bit. He's got uh, like four armor, which is fairly high in this game. Um, it's not as high as a tag, obviously, but still pretty solid. And then- Unfortunately, he's a pretty elite guy, but they just gave him a wussy combi rifle. Yeah, whatever. I got a breaker pistol. That's true. I could break you with that. I, don't know. I think breaker pistols have cool ammo. That's what, <laughs> that's what their deal is. These guys over here, my Agua Las Cidles, which are basically is a rough translation to like sheriff or bailiff or something like that. Me personally, I call them water boys because it looks like agua to me in Spanish for water. So these are my, instead of cheerleaders, the nomads get water boys is what I call them. So All right. I got three of those. They're basic troopers again, not real great, but they can they can cause some trouble. Um, they do have combi rifles and can do the arrows. That's kind of what you use them for. Um, but if I lose those guys, I lose my order pool. Which I'm sitting on seven orders plus one lieutenant order. We both are, yeah. So that's the way the that's the way this. It's, it's like up. they planned that. Yep, it's like they planned it. So, but they are important. Um, a little note too about the factions. Uh, ben was mentioning this too. Um, I'm playing the nomads. Nomads are spacefaring guys. There's like six ships or something like three. that. Three: Tunguska, Bakunin, oh, and down. Corregidor. All right, so three ships now. Probably both like that before, but three ships, and. Um, they float around, then they are nomads, and they uh, work together. It's a fleet-based chapter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a 40K joke. That was a 40K joke. Yeah. All right. All right. It's okay. You can laugh, then. But anyway, um, yeah. And then Pano, Ben, they're kind of the jerks, right? Well, pa Pano is like, uh, it's kind of like a, the common theme you see uh, in the futuristic dystopian society. Like, on the surface, everything looks good. If you live in Pano, you're probably going to have a nice house and, like, decent income and your life's going to be pretty okay, but then there's like, they have the sort of uh, dark fascist underside. Um, so I kind of think of them as all sort of jerks. Uh, also, kind of the big, there's two big boogeymen in this game, and one of them is uh, the combined army who want to either wipe out or enslave humanity, and the other one is Aleph, which is a, an AI that is sort of kind of out of control, and it also kind of sort of wants to wipe out humanity, but right now it's smart enough to know that it needs humans to help it. Uh, the nomads, that's kind of what their whole deal is. They're the only humans who know and are willing to admit that Aleph is a bad thing and scary and probably not good for the long-term survival of mankind. 
Pano, on the other hand, they are more than happy to do whatever Aleph wants. They kind of use it as like a big decision maker, you know, just a big supercomputer. So like, Aleph, what should we do about this? And Aleph will tell them. Um, so they're kind of like slaves to Aleph. Aleph is oppression, man. Yeah, Aleph is oppression. Um, <laughs> but there's also, Aleph also has a whole faction because it has its own troops as well. But uh, that's, a whole, you know, that's a whole other thing for another day. Those guys are sweet. Yeah, they they're, like, they're like the iPhone faction. Everybody yeah. is all cool and white and yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Clean. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, we, yeah, we've gone way back. off on a tangent here, so let's just stop this Bring and let's back. actually start playing some games. Yeah. Nomad first turn was uh, not super uneventful, but it was pretty straightforward. I moved a lot of stuff up. As you can see, my TO camouflage marker moved up here, moved this way, and then into cover here and over. I uh, spent two actions doing that. Um, I activated the uh, sniper here, the, and he uh, unloaded on the uh, special agent in the middle, so she would stop shooting my guys as I moved. Uh, took her out, um, just straight up shot her sniper rifle. Uh, she wasn't within an inch of the, the lip, so she didn't get cover. My guy was in cover. She AR'd back, which she shot back, but didn't hit. Um, so nothing too exciting there. Then I was able to move my mobile brigada up, moved to there. Uh, spent an, a couple actions doing that. And then uh, for my Aguasils, I kind of spun them around. I do know that Ben's got a drop-in guy, um, so I kind of wanted to cover multiple fire lanes. The line of line of vision in this game uh, on the model is 180, so you basically shoot anything in your front, uh, front half, not even an arc, it's really your front half. So um, you can cover a lot of, of uh, field that way. So uh, the way these guys are set up, he's got this half covered, this guy's got that side covered. Um, so if he tries to drop in back here, I've got a couple guys lined up to shoot. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Nomad Turn 1. We'll kick it over to Pan O and see how they respond. All right, we're pausing in the middle of my turn. Uh, well, actually, right at the start of my turn because I've done a combat jump. What? The way that works is uh, I've got this guy, this uh, Akalis. He, whenever you do a combat jump, you take out this template, you put it down, and you have to put the guy somewhere inside of it. Then they have to make a successful physique roll. If they fail, uh, then you have to put them on the corner of your over in your deployment zone, touching the table. Because I don't know, I guess like they slept in that day, or like the plane took off too fast. They're going to jump out of. But yeah, if you if you fail that roll, then they just they just really suck, and they have to go somewhere else. And your opponent yells, "Get in the corner, baby!" Yeah, and you go, "Nobody ever puts baby in the corner except this time." Anyway, no. <clears throat> so he's over here. Adam did do a very good job of setting up some fire corridors so that I couldn't get in. Um, so we have uh, these two Alguacils over here. Now he put it so that one was looking that way and the other was looking that way. Um, so there was just a tiny little lane that I could put them down. Uh, I had to put them behind this building so the Grenzer on the roof couldn't see. Uh, so that just leaves this one lady here. She is going to get to arrow in, a, in, a, in response to my movement. Um, but I landed just outside of that, I hope, just outside of that combi rifle uh, sweet spot. So she should hopefully be at a minus three. And she only gets the one shot. So I'm hoping I'll be okay. Uh, we'll come back after the end of the turn and talk about what happened. Okay, Ben just finished up his whole turn. Uh, ben, go ahead and walk us through, man. What, what, uh, what ended up happening? All right, so over here was not fun. Uh, this guy, well, it was a little bit of fun. <laughs> he he did kill one. Uh, right, he did one down that guy, sale, which which could have been worse. Yep. But then he got killed uh, in his next activation. Yeah. So these he guys shot, shot, he shot that guy. It managed to even managed to hit him, mm -hmm. but he passed his armor save because he's in cover. So yeah, he downed this guy. This guy made his cover armor <laughs> save from cover. Yep. All right, and then um, and then we shot him back. So after that, it was uh, just my father night. He's trying to get up to the uh, zone. And so I can get those points for it. He managed to get himself shot as well. Because he started back. Yeah, he started way back here. Um, so he had to jump in between cover, but there was one part of his movement between two pieces of cover where he was out in the open uh, after his second short order, or sorry, after his first short order. Yeah, he moved here. right there, yeah. And so that Grenzer managed to take a pot shot at him. Pop shot, sniped him. And I used my LT order to get him up a little bit. I don't know why I did that. It's just. Probably putting him in more danger, but maybe he'll do something cool later. He's a pretty good guy. He's uh, He's got a multi-rifle and some heavy armor. He's a pretty good trooper, so 
Maybe I want to put him into the fight. And then the last thing I did was just move my Nis over here because this side of the field is where all the action is going on. So now he'll be able to ARO against all these guys over here. Yep. Uh, so basically, I'll be getting to do to Adam, hopefully, what he's been doing to me. What? Which is sniping dudes whenever they try to move towards the objective. Good plan. Okay, so kick it over to Nomad's turn two. Okay, so Nomad uh, turn two was pretty straightforward. Um, I had my, my TO camo guy. He was over here. I ran him across to here, and he actually uh, he actually got spotted by the knight. Uh, what's his name? Father Knight. Father Knight. I almost called him Papa Knight, but <laughs> Papa Midnight spotted me, and I had to run out. He took a pop shot with an, another ARO. Um, he missed, and uh, I just I missed yeah. He rolled a twenty. It was pretty pretty epic. <clears throat> um, <laughs> anyway, I ran the ran the guy back up here, my Spectre. And then I pop the uh, the, tam the camo. You have to spend a whole order to go back to camo, but it makes them a lot harder to, to be shot. So you have to dis do a discovery roll and stuff like that. So my turn was pretty simple. And then um, I just truffle shuffled uh, my healer right there to get more of a fire arc uh, that way. So I've got two models basically covering this whole fire lane. So anyway, that's it for me. We're going to kick it over to Ben's Pano for turn two for them. We just finished my turn. Uh, that was a pretty interesting turn. Uh, my orc. Uh, who started way back over here, uh, moved all the way up through all this stuff, came over here, shot uh, one of the alguacels that was hiding back there, the alguaciles, or however it's pronounced, <clears throat> the water boys, as Adam likes to call them. That's probably just easier than me butchering the correct word each time. Uh, shot him again. Yeah, he uh -huh. walked past the corpse of the, of the drop <laughs> troop that came in early. So yeah, came all the way around, and I decided I was going to finish off Adam's LT, so... My whoa, whoa, came, whoa! How my... did you find out? <laughs> yeah, somehow I knew... Somehow I knew who Adam's LT was, even though that's private information. So I came around the corner, I thought my orc troop was just going to be able to light this dude up with the multi-rifle, um, but I only managed to do one wound in the end, despite two uh, full bursts into him. Not happy about that. Uh, so now, my LT is out there in the open. Wait. I mean, not my LT. What? Don't listen, don't listen at him. He's out there in the open. He's got a... This guy can't see him because that giant building's on the way, but the guy I just tried to kill is now going to try to kill me. Um, and I put his facing pretty bad. Uh, this is something that you guys can learn from, a mistake, definitely. If I'd put him facing this way, that would have just been worlds better. But instead, he's looking right like this because I wasn't thinking. So that means both these guys, if they just move a little bit, this guy can move to like here, and then he'll be able to shoot my guy without me being able to respond. Same with his Reverend. Uh, so I put my LT in a pretty bad spot, and I didn't even get to take down his LT. So I killed one of his cheerleaders. Could have been worse. They're water boys. Wounded. Sir. Yeah, sorry. Killed a water boy. Wounded in a, a lieutenant. But overall, probably not the best way things could have shaken down. We'll come back after Adam's turn. So nomad turn here. What I did is uh, I took my my you, Spectre. You did some serious war. He did he did some work for me this turn. That's what you did. I did some war crimes. You said. Yeah, you did. Yeah, he did. Those rules were not. It was. They were not legal. They've been outlawed by all <laughs> sorts of conventions. So uh, as you guys may remember, yeah. I had the uh, the to camouflage guy right here. Uh, I moved him up to the corner, um, and then I fired at the father. Splat. Oh. Pop, it's all over. Papa. He's just bits of him are like sprayed across that canister right now. That's right. Papa Knight got on. got shot down, um, and that made him sacrifice his TO marker, but that's okay. Um, I then uh, used my remaining order or remaining orders. I, I did lose two orders because he has taken out two of my guys. And they're unconscious. I uh, used those orders to then cross the street, unopposed. Uh, he had nobody in uh, line of fire. Nope. And then I used another order to move up to position, and then my final order, I turned the corner and opened up on uh, his cheerleaders back here. Now, I think it is important to point out that my, uh, my one of my poor fusiliers, the one who died, did heroically shoot him, but uh, the shot was canceled during the face-to-face -face rule. It but was. Despite, because he's, he's at a minus nine right now. He has T.O. So camouflage fact, yeah. and the cover, and the so. Cover. So the fact that you know she was able to even make that bullet connect is good. So it was rolled a one. Yep. So she but it tried, didn't connect because tried, I canceled them out. Yes, she did. So. She tried as hard as she could. Yep. Uh, Captain try hard. Now, but what what happened here? You did so much this turn. You forgot about the horrors you committed 
over on your side. Oh yeah, table. let's let's go because back that way. There was a time when I had a lieutenant, and now I do not. Was that your lieutenant, Ben? Oh what? Yeah. It turned what? Out he See, I tried to psych you out by being really aggressive with him, which is a terrible idea. But mm. you didn't fall for it and killed him anyway. Not only oh, did I God. did I did I drop him with the uh, the sniper shot here. The, yeah, they, it basically went down the way that I said it probably would, where yeah. you were able to bring that guy up and never, you know, move into my model's sight arc. So you could just, just kill him without boop. even worrying about an ARO. Yep, and not only I shot him, he, he we, we looked up the cover rules to be sure. You actually have to be touching the cover providing, uh, touching the, the terrain providing cover. He's right. not touching this piece of terrain, so and I can still see his head. Yeah. Therefore, I can I can hit him. So that's how we we came to that conclusion. So I shot him, and then not only did I shoot him, my secret lieutenant don't don't listen, Ben. <laughs> I used that order to then move up and then coup de gras him, or as our buddy Kings like to say, coup de grace. So bad English, but he took him out completely. So he's actually dead, dead. So yeah. That's the marker. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter to me what they what happens with the other guys because I don't have a doctor anyway, so yep. they're not going to stop being unconscious. Basically, I was just trying to rub some salt on it. And you did. You did yep. that successfully. Salt yeah, he, rub he rolled continued. A, he rolled a 13 on the rub salt roll. And Boom. It was, was a, a crit. Cool success. It was a crit. So we're going to kick it over to the uh, Pano guys. Well, yeah. So let's, and let's see go what it can really do. Quick. I do have a dead lieutenant, so oh. that means what I have to do. I've only got three guys left. Um, and all of them are going to activate as irregulars this turn because I am in the state of loss of lieutenant. So that means instead of being able to spend my orders, all of them on one guy, if I choose, everybody's just going to activate uh, normally and they're just going to use their own order for themselves. And you know what? Ah, I did it again. My sniper totally could have seen your specter, but that's a wasted opportunity. You got to use those arrows when you get them or you lose them. It's what it says in the rules. Fair enough. So okay, so let's kick it over to Pano and see if he can't take out my specter. All right, well, that kind of sucked hard. Uh, so, my three surviving soldiers, now down to two surviving soldiers, try to finish off the specter that's sneaking around back here. He's a ghost! So first, my sniper activated. I was pretty excited. He's got a high BS. Far enough away that the specter is in his, uh, in that sweet spot where he's getting a plus three. And not only that, this is the guy with the visor that lets him ignore the camo, so he's not at that minus six like the Fusiliers were. However, he still decided he would miss with both of his rolls. I got a 16 and a 20. Uh, over here... Because I was getting cover still. So. You were still getting cover, but man. It's like shooting a predator, man. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, I get a visor that's, that takes away his camo, and then it won't work, I guess. Yeah. Um, so over here, leads, the Fusiliers, the first one... I moved to here, and yeah, we've just pulled the body. We're not putting up the unconscious markers because I can't really do anything to bring him back. Anyway, Fusilier, that was here, moved to here to shoot this guy. Unfortunately, I forgot. Do -do 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 -do. Spectre, way down there, arrowed me to death. Or sorry, that's a Grenzer. 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 Grenzer, Spectre. So the Grenzer arrowed my poor Fusilier. He died. Uh, did not get any shots off on the Spectre. However, this hero ba -ba -ba -ba, moved back out of where the, uh, spe Grenzer. the Grenzer could see him, unleashed a hail of bullets on this guy, hit him twice, however, he shot back, his arrow canceled one, and the other, he saved, he made his armor saving throw. So, oh, guts. and then, yeah, the guts, he failed his guts roll though, so he had to retreat. Um, so things are looking really bad for me. Uh, if I have any troops left alive, when it comes back to my turn again, I will get I won't have to activate everyone irregularly because I've nominated a new lieutenant. Uh, I don't know who is it. I don't know who it is. Yeah, I don't actually. La, 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 la. Yeah, but uh, Adam has way more orders than I do. I'm doing really badly, so I don't see good things happening in my future. All right, so go ahead and take your turn. It looks like uh, I can see the future because look at this. We got a specter hanging around, chilling out, and so we got off, no Pano guys left. So <laughs> yeah, Adam, what happened? So I just got my first order to shift. Uh, the Grenadier guy over. Grenzer. Grenzer. Yep. Grenadier. Yep. Same, Grenadier. Whatever. Moved him over here, um, and I shot that guy. The uh, the Beep. fusilier popped Dead. him. Um, no big deal there. That space where there is no model. Once there was a fusilier there. Boom. Then I used my next order to activate to move cautiously. Um, the specter. So move from here. He's in cover. Moving cautiously means that uh, when you start out of line of fire, the opponent does not get an ARO. So I move here and I move four inches this way, which was 
outside of the line of sight because you have a 180, so yep. you can't see behind you even if it crosses. So And that, that again, earlier I was talking about how I need to be more careful about facing. I, I blew it again. I could have pivoted him and I would have been getting arrows against this guy, but I, I didn't do it. So he was able to move into his back and, then I uh, my next and just order. walk up and not even care. Moved up eight to get in my sweet spot. Use there another go. order. Burst fire, three Blew shots. him away. Took him out. So. Yep. So that's it. Uh, we didn't really even do anything with the objective. Um, I, I took her out though. I mean, yeah, you, and you, not on a date. You squat. Yeah, you, you splatted her. Splatted her. Splatted she her was going to shoot me, man. What are you doing? Yeah. Well, she, she was shooting at you. Yeah. Anyway, though, uh, I don't think that... The, I mean, I think it was silly of us to play this scenario from the, from the learning book. You know, it's <laughs> from the Ice Storm book because uh, there's not really that much to it. Um, well, basically, the objective is worth four points, and all of your guys are worth one point each. Right. So there's very little incentive for you to come out of hiding and really go for it. Especially because the scenario ends when one side has zero models. Yeah. So. So I was uh, I was really going for it just because you know bat rep. Let's play, but let's not just hide. And obviously that went bad for me because I kept moving my guys in the uh, line of the arrows. So fortunately, the the scenarios in the book are going to be a little bit more interesting. Yeah. Um, there's definitely more hard, you know, and fast reasons why you need to go to the center, and that's always going to be important in games like this, especially in a game like Infinity, where you can shoot back when people do stuff. You know, you got to have a reason why you ever want to leave cover. So I think scenarios are even more important for this game than you know the usual ones we yeah, play. For sure. Um, additionally, you know, I know I learned a lot of stuff. I feel like my biggest failure of the game was. Uh, the where, when and where I brought in my drop troop. Um, Adam did play a few more games of uh, second edition than me. Yeah. So even though, you know, we both kind of know the N3 rules about the same, he's kind of got those instincts left over from when he used to play more, so he was able to set up some really good fire corridors and really limit my options. I, I mean, I don't know what I oh, would have done. Thanks, man. Oh, you're welcome, man. <laughs> also, you look pretty. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, so... Off of my ego today, man. <laughs> so... I don't know, maybe I could have put him over here somewhere, like hiding behind these these barrels or something, and just been more of a thorn in the side than trying to just go so gonzo and just like jump right in, guns blazing. Yeah. But you know, that's that's the sort of thing we're gonna have to learn more about as I play. You know, like the rules, it seems like this is one of those games where, you know, learning the rules is, is only a fraction of it. It's There's only also, half the battle? Yeah. You also really have to get the instincts. You know, everybody talks about, oh, it's so different from every other game, and. And man, it's really different from every other game. Yeah. You know, like I thought like, oh, Malifaux's got to be like the most different game because that has cards, but the dynamics of this are just so different. I mean, just the fact that you can just activate one guy as your whole turn, it's just really difficult to predict what, what an active player can do. He can just move models everywhere. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's, a couple of there's things. still a lot to learn. Yeah, there's a couple of things that I want to call it too, is like the whole activating one guy, well, it sounds awesome all the time, you, you run into scenarios right here, what, what happened with the uh, the drop pod guy, right? Or the drop in guy. He dropped in, he tried to ramble it up all by himself, all by his lonesome, and I just overwhelmed him with AROs. Yeah. So you gotta be really careful. Um, the other thing I, I remember from playing before is what I was trying to do, not only like keep Ben off the center, but going after people's cheerleaders. Because people don't wanna move that stuff, they don't wanna waste, they don't wanna waste orders on their cheerleaders. If you go back there and take them out, which is what Ben was trying to do here, yeah. so I was going to return the favor with the, the Spectre, you just worked Except out a little better. Except you succeeded where I didn't. Right, because it's it, that I think that comes with the experience of the of knowing when to fire and, and just... I, I did play a lot more of, of second edition than, than Ben, so I just had a more grasp without just setting up fire lanes and um, trying to hold hold those down. But um, I can't blame Ben. I mean, that was... It was a, definitely a learning game for both of us. We did stumble on quite a few different rules. So uh, if we screwed anything up, I'm sure you guys are going to let us know in the comments. Oh, so. I'm sure you guys are going to let us know in the comments. <laughs> and well, that's fine. Learning, that's fine. So that's fine, yeah. Um, if, you, if you did catch anything, go ahead and point it out because this is a learning experience for everybody. But it was, it was entertaining. Uh, I definitely want to play again. Yep, I got more models waiting to be painted. I got so more that'll notes, happen. too. That'll happen. All right, thanks for watching. Go Wildcats. Go That's Wildcats. the faction. For <laughs> there were no Wildcats today, but Adam, Wildcat Adam is looking fire. forward That's to his Wildcats. Boy. Yep. That's right. All right. All right, Wolves fans, thanks for watching. Adam Harry and Gentleman, yep. signing off. We're out of here. Have a good one.